Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to do a walkthrough of a problem on apexsandbox.io, maximum subarray problem 110. This is a problem actually I did contribute uh, to Apex Sandbox, and this is a project I'm really excited to help support because I think it's well past time that in this industry we have something to use and something to work on to solve these sort of problems, to prepare for technical interviews. Uh, besides going on leak code, hacker rank, etc., and, you know, what I would do is, I don't know, I would, you know, I'd either solve it in Java or I'd try to solve it in Apex, convert back to Java, things like that, because Apex isn't supported anywhere. So this is a really fantastic resource. And today we're going to look at a problem that I think is a pretty common interview problem and a very common tech algorithmic technique to solve these sorts of problems, the sliding window technique. And so this problem, and look, first of all, let's just take a look at it. Let's read through the description and see what we're going to try to do here. So we are going to be given a list of integers that can contain positive and negative values and an integer target. And we are going to calculate the maximum subarray of the length of the target. So what that means here, if we look at our example, as we're, we say we have this list 2, 3, negative 5, 1, 8, and a target of 2. So we want what's the maximum subarray that contains two values? In this case, we, this should return 9 because it's 1 and 8. And that would be bigger than, say, 2 and 3 is 5. 3 and 5 is negative 2. Uh, you know, 5 and 1 is negative 4, etc. Now, the challenge here, right, is you don't know what the target's going to be until runtime. Target could be, right, if this is 3, that changes everything. If it's 4 or it's, you know, it's a large set. So our constraint here is also we need to be able to handle data sets of up to, say, 5,000 members. So that gives us an idea. If we probably do anything other than something that, say, runs in linear time, this will probably blow up and we will fail for a CPU error. So our challenge here is how can we solve this in, I'm going to say, probably a linear fashion or better. And the way we do that is something called the sliding window technique. And this problem was designed to be an introduction to that sort of algorithmic, that sort of problem solving technique. So I'm going to open up my uh, anonymous apex here. and we're going to, That's where we're going to solve it. Okay, so I'm going to open up my anonymous Apex here, and I've got, you know, the problem stubbed out from Apex Sandbox, and this is a lot of times how I solve these problems, is I just go over and I put it in my uh, anonymous Apex, I, you know, my IDE first, and I work through it that way. So, the idea here is, like I said, we need to somehow start with a window of target and compare values in our list to what is currently inside that target. So, in fact, let me go, and I'm gonna go back to uh, practice problems. All right, and I'm going to, I'm gonna grab that, and I'm gonna put it in our code as a comment, so we have it as a reference. Okay, so now we've got a size of target two. And what I'm gonna first do, is I'm going to declare a couple integers. Integer max sum. I'm going to just set that equal to zero. That's the value we are finally going to return is the max sum. And I'm going to make another one. Integer, I'm going to call it temp sum. And we're going to use the temp sum to compare to the max sum as we work through this, right? Because we're looking for, in this case, a target of two. So it's a, hey, two and three, right? That's maybe, that's our current max sum. It would say two and three, and then we would say like, okay, three and negative five. Is three plus negative five, is that bigger than two plus three? No, okay? So we know that our that's our current max sum, right? Then what about five and negative one? Is that bigger, right? No, right? So we then, you know, what about one and eight? Yes, it is bigger. So if we always had a target of two, this would be a lot easier, but we don't know what it's going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to say, first we're going to, we're going to build our first window. And what that's going to look like is we're going to do a for loop. This, this is how I do it. I is equal to zero. I is less than target. Okay. I plus plus. 
And we're going to say max sum plus equals nums. What? What did you just do to me? Plus equal nums i. All right, so we're going to build that first window. We know whether it is, right, so whether we are, whether our target is three, our target is 100, no matter how many values we have in here, we are going to get the sum of the first n number of values in our list. And that's what we're going to start with. So that is our starting max sum. Okay, so now that we've got our first window built, what we're going to do is we are also, so we're going to take the value that we currently have a max sum, max sum, and we're going to assign that to temp sum. So we're going to say temp sum equals max sum. All right. Now what we need to do, we've got our window built, is we need to take that window and we need to slide it over. So right now we've got our max sum is equal to two and three. And our actually in our temp sum, we set equal to max sum. So what we need to do is now we have this window right now that contains two values. We need to slide it forward and say, hey, three plus negative five, which is going to be negative two, is that bigger than our initial value? So then we also need to subtract. So we're going to add a value in to our window, negative five, and we are going to subtract the outgoing value because in this case, our window is of a size two. So we need to subtract the two. So what that's going to look like is we're going to do another for loop. We're going to say for integer i, and that's going to equal target. Oops, not equals. So now we're going to start at, at target, because we already built everything that was uh, less than target in our first for loop. i is less than. nums.size, and then just, don't know what just happened there. I++, right? And now what we need to do is and right, you know, right down here, I'm just going to, so I can get rid of that red squiggly, I'm just going to return max sum. Okay. We're going to update our window. And I'm going to say temp sum is going to be equal to, because remember, right now, temp sum is, in our initial condition, temp sum, we just set it equal to max sum. So I'm going to say temp sum is going to be equal to, We're going to say, well, first we're going to subtract the outgoing value. And that's going to equal nums at i minus target plus nums i. So Let's think a little bit about what we just did here. All right, so we set temp sum equal to max sum right here. And then we are going to, we started with our i is equal to target. i is less than size i plus plus. And we'll say, so what we want to do, we're going to move forward and we want to subtract this two from temp sum. So what we're going to, we're going to that, get rid of that outgoing value and add in this incoming value. So temp sum would now be equal to negative two because we subtracted two, we added in the negative five. And then all we have to do is set max sum equal to, and here's your little trick, just use, you just use math.max for these kinds of problems. Math.max, it's just gonna give you the bigger value. Temp sum, max sum. And then we just return our max sum. So let's see, I do have a red squiggly here. What is going on? Why? Of 
because that's a parentheses there. All right. Now let's take this and uh, let's just copy and paste it. I'm going to put it in here. Run. It should pass. There we go. We got our Salesforce confetti. You can see there were uh, about five, five different test cases here that ran. So hope that was useful. That was an introduction to the sliding window technique in Apex. If you liked it, take a second. Let me know in the comments. Uh, hit like and subscribe and head on over to Apex Sandbox IO and try some of these problems out. I think it'll be worth your time. I'll see everybody next time.